of the calendar, briefly told from the dawn of divided time. The year, the month, the day. Those inevitable periods are caused by celestial revolutions that turn with the regularity of our earthly wheel. While living things may pass, time marches inexorably on. We, however, will reverse the moving shadow cast by the sun to the period when man made his first division of time from the repeated appearances of the new moon. His earliest records of these appearances were mysterious cup and ring marks found all over the world. Full moon was only too often the occasion for human sacrifice, usually of the fairest virgin. The ancients probably regarded the moon as some mysterious manifestation that should be answered. A further division of time was made by the sun's daily appearance, which occurred roughly 29 and a half times between the new moon, and each appearance denoted a day. Later calculations showed that the moon travelled round the Earth roughly once every 27 and a third days. Yet there were 29 and a half days between the new moon. Why? The reason is that while the moon revolved round the Earth, the Earth moved its own position in its journey round the sun, and altered the appearance of the moon viewed from the Earth. So the moon, to regain its original appearance, must travel roughly another two and a quarter days at each lunation. This makes a total of 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes and 3 seconds per lunation. Thus, the month was born. Now, 12 moons, or months, of 29 and a half days give a period of 354 days, the first calculated year. But the Earth travelled round the sun in 365 and a quarter days, and that complicated matters. You see, the ancients also marked time by the seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter, though they weren't known by those names. Rather, were they observed as the regular natural phenomena which man has and always will recognize. What confused the ancients was that the seasons, being controlled by the sun, did not agree with their own divisions of time, which were calculated from the moon. Consternation in the camp. No moon. What could they do? A moon year of 354 days, a sun year of 365 and a quarter days. Eventually, the Jews decided to alter the calendar. They put in an additional month, seven times every 19 years as in this Jewish calendar of 1400 BC. But they found that after 19 years, there was still an error of seven and a quarter days. Many mathematical changes in the calendar were made from time to time, but the simplest method was used in ancient Rome, where unscrupulous pontiffs made alterations to suit themselves. When their term of office was nearing completion, they just destroyed the prevailing calendar and wrote a new one and stayed on. This injustice ended with the coming of Julius Caesar, who formed the Julian calendar, in which the year had 365 days, with an extra day added every 10 years. This gave an error of 11 minutes per year. By 1577 AD, the error amounted to 10 days. In that year, Pope Gregory gave us the calendar we use today, the Gregorian calendar. Throughout the history of time, the one period that has remained constant is the day astronomically speaking, that is. Call it a day, however, it has a different meaning to different people. To the news cameraman, his day is governed by events. To 
the car designers and laboratory staffs, their day is a new idea or accomplishment. But to most, it is the end of a day's work and a trail for home. Call it a day, a happy phrase, and so often indicative of a job well done, whether it be for factory worker who has left the workshop behind, or bus driver who changes his 60-seater bus for his four-seater Ford and revels in its easy responsiveness. Commercial traveller calls it a good day when he collects a nice order and takes the wheel of his V8 to guide him surely homeward. Among the thousands of road users are the van drivers making their last deliveries. They call it a day when they can hear the purring of their Ford engines taking them on the homeward stretch. Every day of travel ends with satisfaction if you go by Ford or Fordson. They will serve you unfailingly and well. And whatever the length of the journey, you can accomplish it without strain or fatigue.